All right, this is grade three, module one, lesson three. And in this lesson, students are going to be interpreting the meaning of factors. And we're going to be talking about the size of groups uh, versus the number of groups. Uh, the other thing we're going to be talking about in this lesson is we're going to be introducing this new idea called number bond. And a number bond uh, is, is with addition, uh, and that's how it's going to be connected to our multiplication lesson. For example, uh, 15 can be written as, using a number bond, as 5 plus 5 plus 5. And so that you can see that these 5s add up to equal 15, and that this number bond represents the multiplication 3 times 5, as in 3 groups of 5 equals 15. So let's get started. So in this problem it says there are blank apples in each basket so ostensibly we're looking at these and we're saying okay here's the baskets in fact it says there are six baskets so I can see one two three four five six and there are six baskets and I can see that there are four apples in each basket and down here it says the number of groups how many groups are there meaning how many baskets well there's six groups and there are four in each group. So our multiplication sentence, the way we are defining it right now, is six times four equals what? And that's the total number of apples, right? How many apples are there in six baskets? So we're going to have to count all of these apples. And of course, we're going to get 24 apples. Parents and teachers, this is a great opportunity to let your kids practice counting and then get that one-to-one -one correspondence. It's also a good opportunity to allow those who can to skip count. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. Not everybody can do that. Um, and so there are 24 apples together. Now, parents and teachers, here's a nice idea. You can whisper count. And you can um, whisper the first three numbers and kind of shout the fourth number. So you could go, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. And that's how you can help develop this idea of letting the kids skip count, develop the, the skill of skip counting. And then eventually it could be silent, 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 four, silent, 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 eight, silent. 12, and then 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. So there's this progression on how you can eventually help students learn that skip counting concept. Uh, and this is a nice just little introduction. You can just kind of work that into your normal lesson. So here we've moved to the array, and it says there are blank peppers in each row. So the idea is we want to help students uh, learn that vocabulary, rows versus columns and shelves go or like books go in a row not in a column so we're gonna put books on a shelf kind of a like and uh, so I think right here here's my row alright here's my rows and I can see that there are three peppers in each row and how many peppers are there in all six rows so number of rows so rows in this case is kind of like saying groups there are three peppers in each group. So the number of groups, or the number of rows, in this case, is six. The number of the size of each group, or the size of each row, is three. So we're going to say six groups of three equals 18. So there are 18 peppers altogether. This is a great another opportunity for your students to begin the practice of learning how to skip count. And they can do that through whispering. You could do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And that's how you can begin uh, helping students learn how to skip count their threes. And the last problem for this video, it says we've, we've removed scaffolding even further, and it says now draw an array using the factors of 4 and 2. Show a number bond where each part represents the amount in one row. All right. And so 4 and 2. Draw an array using factors of 4 and 2. So if I wanted to, I could think of this uh, as four groups of 2. But of course, 
parents and teachers, some of your students may want to do two groups of four, and both of these would be allowed. And so I'm going to do this one, four groups of two, simply because it's in the same order. But parents and teachers, don't let your students feel like they did it wrong if they want to think of it as two groups of four, because, of course, the commutative property says we're allowed to do that. So we're going to draw an array, four groups of two. So let's see, I'm going to get that pen here. And there's one group of two. And then there's another group of two. And there's another group of two. And then there's another group of two. So there is my array. And you can see, here's a group, here's a group, here's a group, and there's a group. So there's my four groups of two. Uh, so if I wanted to... It doesn't say I have to, but I'm going to write 4 times 2 is equal to 8. But it does ask us to write a number bond. So I'm going to put my 8 as the total. And because I have 4 groups of 2, my number bond is going to look like this. 4 groups of 2. And that wraps up this problem. Now, of course, parents and teachers, students who do this, two groups of four. I can, I can kind of quickly do that. Let's, let's do that real quick. Okay, so I'm going to scooch this aside a little bit. So two groups of four. What would that look like? Well, two groups of four might look like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So there's my two groups of four. And in case you're not sure what the heck I'm talking about, there's a group of four and there's a group of four. And so if we wanted to write that number bond, Here's our 8, and our num number bond here would look like this, and our multiplication would be 2 times 4 equals 8. So parents and teachers, I don't want you to build too much into this concept of whether this answer is right or this answer is right. They're both correct depending on how the student thinks about that problem. And that wraps up third grade module 1, lesson 3, interpreting the meaning of factors, uh, in particular, talking about the size of groups and the number of groups.